All right, in section 4.6, we're going to continue with exponential growth models. Uh, this is actually my second time making this video. The first time I, I had the mute button. So that's why some of the page up here is filled in. All right, so number one says the function f of x, which is going to be the result of our calculation, is 81.15 times 1.013 raised to the x. This is used to model population. It's a population growth in the United States in millions based on the number of years since the year 1900. And so they want us to look at this function, f of x equals this function, and what do all the pieces mean? Okay, first of all, raised to the x, x is going to be the number of years since 1900. My number out here, 81.15, this is my initial population. So in the year 1900, when x is 0, the population of the United States was 81.15 million people. And then it grew from there. And what was the growth percentage? We moved the decimal over to, this, this would represent a growth rate of 1.3% annually. That's what's going on here. So question number two says to fill in this table. And once we have this table, go ahead and make a graph using the data values. They want to know the population based on the model, 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, or 100 years since the year 1900. So once again, we're going to use our calculator to do this. Let's go ahead and change our table settings. So we're going to start at 0. And change, delta table means every row will go up by 20. So that's in table settings, and that's how we're going to get 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100. So I'm just going to quit there. Now I want to put this function in my y1. So you press the y equals, and I've put the function 81.15. <coughs> Here's your open paren, open paren, 1.014. Here's your close paren, raised to the x. So I have my function in y1, and I have my table settings. So now the blue key for table would be second table. And here's my table with my population model. So in the year 1900, the population was 81.15, and this is in millions. In 20 years, 1920, it was 105.07. 40 years, it was 136.04. 60 years, it was 176 million. 140,000. 1980, it was 228 million and 100 years from 1900, which is the year 2000. It's 295.28. So we have these ordered pairs, the x value, the y value x value, y value. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six data values to put on our graph. All right, so here's our graph. Um, our title will be Population of U.S. since 1900 number of years since 1900, so let's say this is 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, that'll work. 20 years, 40 years, 60 years, 80 years, and 100 years since the year 1900. And along this axis, we have population in millions. So eventually we want to get to 300 million. So let's see if we go by... 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350. That sounds good. 
So here's 50 million. Here's 100 million. 150 million. 200 million. 250 million. 300 million. So now we want to graph this data. Zero, I'll go ahead and model it. Zero, 81, 50, 60, 70, 80. When x is 20, y is 105.7, probably right there. When x is 40, the independent variable is 40. The dependent variable is 136. That's 30. There's about 136. When x is 60, y is 176, 150, 60, 150, 160, 170. There's 176. When y is eight, when x is 80, y is almost 230. So here's 210, 20, 30. And 100 years, we're up to almost 300. 250. 300. All right, so we have our table and we have our data values. And if we want to kind of connect them, we can see that this is a curve that increases. That's what an exponential growth curve can look like. All right, so let's fill in here. The function f of x equals 81.15 times this illustrates exponential growth. It's called exponential because the exponent has the variable. The variable is up in the exponent. That's why it's exponential growth. And our population was growing by, you move the decimal place over, 1.3% per year. So the model used in questions one through and three was obtained using official data from a census. And the census is conducted every 10 years. Use your model to predict the population in 2015. All right, so 2015, first of all, we need to know how many years that is from 1900. That's 115 years, so x is going to equal 115. So the value of the function when x is 115 is going to be 81.15 times 1.013 raised to the 115. And when you put that in your calculator, <clears throat> you get that they thought in 2015 the population would be modeled as 358.41 million people in the U.S. All right, so when we looked it up online, the actual population of the U.S. in 2015 was 325.13 million. All right, so that's off by 25 million. That's off by quite a bit. Our model is not really precise. So question... Uh, Question number five says, what do you think the result of your answer four says about population growth in the 21st century? All right, well, well that means population growth must have slowed, slowed down. It did not continue at 1.3% growth 115 years after 1990. So now we're ready to let the calculator do regression modeling to create 
the exponential function. We've already used the calculator to do linear regression. That's where we gave the calculator data values and we did lin reg for linear regression. We want the calculator to come up with the exponential function using this data. So that's going to be EXP reg, standing for exponential regression modeling. And let me go ahead and read this. What if we were to use more recent data? So here's some more recent data from 1990 to 2010. It's uh, done by this other organization called Worldometers. And so here we have the table and the data for years 1990 to 2010. Use this data to find the exponential function, five digits in all parameters, and it says note x now represents years since 1990, not 1900. So we're going to put 0, 5, 10, 15, and 20 in the list L1. And we're going to put our population in list L2. Put that in list L1, put that in list L2, and then we're going to go into our statistics calculator menu and do exponential regression, expra, exp, reg, and it will give us the exponential model. So let me go ahead here. I'm going to hit my stat key and I'm going to edit L1 and L2. I have a bunch of things in there already, so I'm going to hit the delete key to get rid of the data that's in there. I'm going to hit the delete key to get rid of the data that's in L2. You always want the lengths of your two lists, L1 and L2, to be the same because they will become an ordered pair. So in L1 we have 0, 5, 10, 15, and 20. And in L2, cursor over, get into the L2, this is going to be 254, 284.04, 284.59, 298.16, and 312.25. So now I have my L1 and my L2 the same lengths. I'm going to see the quit key, the blue quit key here, second quit. And now I want the calculator to generate an exponential function that matches that data. So under statistics, under stat, go to calc, and here's all your different regressions. I'm going to go down to cubic, quartic, linear, natural log. Mine is number zero, EXPREG, exponential regression. It by default will look at list one and two. Don't worry about the frequency or saving the data. And the calculator comes up with, they tell you that the format of the equation is y equals a times b raised to the x. And they tell us that a is 255.06225, that's my initial value, times 1.01036. 1 1.01036 raised to the x. This is the exponential function that the calculator came up with that matches this data. And if we look at the r's, the, if we look at the correlation coefficients, it's really close to 1. So this is a very good model. These data values actually fit very closely to this, to this model. And it said include five digits in all the parameters. I think I can just write this as 255.06, 1 1.0104 
to the x. That's the exponential function that the calculator came up with. So based just on the base of the exponential in your function, what do you think is going to give us a better estimate for 2015? Probably this, because this has a lower growth rate. This had a growth rate of 1.04 growth rate, 1.04% 1 growth rate as opposed to 1.3. So the lower growth rate is probably, is probably going to be a better model. And then question number eight says, use our function, this one that the calculator came up with, to estimate the population in 2015 and in 2050. And then we'll compare the estimate to what we found on the internet to see how close the comparison is. All right, so for 2015, how many years since 1990 is 2015? That's 25 years. So this is going to be use the f function when x is equal to 25. 255.06 times 1.0104 raised to the 25th. And so for the year 2015, using the model that our calculator came up with, that's 330.35 million. And that's actually a lot closer to what the worldometer estimate was. Now they want us to figure out, use our model to find what we're going to predict the population will be in 2050. So for the year 2050, first of all, we need to know how many years that is since the year 1990. So that's 60 years. So that's the f function when x is 60. 255.06 times 1.0104 raised to the 60. And so in this model, the estimate for the year 2050 is going to be 474.51 million people in the U.S. Okay, so search for a site that does population projection to see how you have compared worldometers. Projection for 2050 was 485 million. All right, well, that's off by 74 million. So maybe uh, world, world, worldometer um, are expecting the growth of the population to slow down probably even more.